Be here now. Just be here now. Welcome to the Be Here Now Network guest podcast. This series features talks from a myriad of modern spiritual teachers expanding on how we can all live a life in balance. If you're interested in supporting this podcast, please go to BeHereNowNetwork.com slash guest. So I'd like to welcome you all to Spirit Rock this evening. Uh, My name is Guy Armstrong. I'm one of the teachers here. And uh, you're lucky to be here tonight because we're really honored and happy uh, to have Yonge Mingyur Rinpoche uh, giving the teachings this evening. Mingyur Rinpoche is, in my view, one of the bright young lights in the whole of the Buddhist world. Uh, He's 35 years old. He already has under his supervision two monasteries in Asia, one outside of Kathmandu and one in India with a large number of monks practicing there. So he already has a lot of responsibility. But I'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, his history to give you a little sense of uh, the unique person that he is. Rinpoche was born to uh, Tulku Urgen Rinpoche, who is his father, uh, in Nepal 35 years ago. And Tulku Urgen Rinpoche was one of the best known uh, Dzogchen masters of the last century. He died late in the 1990s. He, Mingyur Rinpoche received meditation instructions from his father starting around age eight or nine and practiced very diligently from that time when we were probably kicking balls down the block and drawing with crayons at school. And at age 13 entered his first three year retreat. He must have made some good progress in that three-year retreat because as he started his second three-year retreat around age 16, 17, his retreat master died and Mingyur Rinpoche was asked to take on the role of retreat master for the group who was continuing in that three-year retreat. So he became a teacher of three-year retreatants at around age 17. So I think that the elders in his tradition saw something special in his being and in his aptitude for meditation and understanding. He has uh, been teaching in the West quite a lot in recent years and has been uh, attended by large crowds wherever he teaches. 200 people recently at a weekend in uh, Menlo Park 170 on a month-long retreat in Minnesota, which I was uh, fortunate enough to be a part of. And I think that you'll continue to hear his name over the years to come uh, because he really has a lot to offer. However, you're not going to be hearing a lot or seeing a lot of him for a certain period to come because next May he's going into another three-year retreat. He just announced this recently My first concern was for the job security of two of my friends who were working for him, but um, they told me they're not worried. They have lots of videos to uh, fuel the teachings for another few years. So Rinpoche will be with us tonight. He's teaching uh, around the world until next May, and then he will be unavailable for three years. So appreciate the opportunity that you have. So I think that's all that I really have to say. Rinpoche, thank you very much for coming this evening. We're really happy to have you with us. Hello. Thank you very much for your introduction. And I'm very happy to be here. This is my maybe four or three or four times. I forgot. Um, And welcome. Okay, now You have two (laughs) choices. And this decision is a very difficult decision. So you have to think carefully 
and make a decision, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Not, not a very difficult decision. Okay, the choice, choices are first, with a little bit of guided meditation, or first, explanation. Okay, guide meditation, raise your hand. Okay, explanation first, raise your hand. Okay, guide meditation first. <laughs> Please keep your spine straight. And if you have pain in your back, then you can use chair. Or you can use any support for your back. And um, please just relax your body and please close your eyes. <laughs> and uh, mind and body come together. When I was young, my father used to tell me that let your body on the cushion and let your mind in the body. So normally, for us, body is here and mind is all over the place. Now, just join together. And how to join together? No need any special effort. Just recognize that I have body. And feel your body. And your body will just relax. At the, at the same time, your mind also relax. Okay, now please relax. Muscles in your face, ear, neck, shoulder, <coughs> in your stomach, back, and arms, legs. Just relax. 100% relax, not 200% relax. Why I say 100% relax? Because just natural, stress as like natural, you're allowed to have tension, tightness, stress. Okay, no problem. And now please feel the weight in your body, gravity, gravity in your body. And any sensation, any feelings in your body, just be aware of it. Pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral, doesn't matter. Now, please expand your awareness even outside of your body. Please listen to sound around you. The birds are singing. There's a different sound, different birds. Just let sound come to you. You don't have to look for sound. And you can move. Your awareness move from sound to sound. 
coughing, birds singing, your friends are moving, shaking. and tactile sensation, which is your body and chair, cushion, or your clothes. Just notice. <coughs> and now you can aware of space around you. Be aware of space around you. There's other friends in this room all meditating together. Be aware of your friend. And even you can expand your awareness outside of this room, this hall. There's trees, hills, there's Birds are flying in the space. And there's cloud in the space, maybe. Please expand your awareness even beyond the cloud, the boundless space. There's solar system, galaxies, galaxies. As space is boundless, your awareness is also boundless. Now, please slowly open your eyes and rest your mind in the present moment. Here, right now, right here. Okay, that's finished now. I would like to begin with a little bit my own story about uh, meditation. Is there any new to meditation? Anyone who began to learn meditation recently? Anyone? Okay, good. When I was uh, seven, eight years old, I had uh, panic disorder. You know panic? <laughs> Sounds familiar? <laughs> good. <laughs> I'm not alone, yeah? <laughs> and... Uh, 
I was born in northern part of Nepal, right? Nepal, you know Nepal? Right in the middle of Himalayan mountains. Actually, I have this, uh, what do you call it? Seven or eight highest mountain in the world. Excuse me, mountain Manasilu. Manasilu. And the foothills of mountain Manasilu. I was born in foothills of mountain Manasilu. Very nice place. Although I have nice area, nice place, but still I have this panic. Follow me as like shadow. Why I have panic? I think one reason is there's some kind of like fear of strangers. And we have snowstorm. Winter time, snowstorm. And summer, there's, there's thun, thunderstorm. And I'm looking for a solution. My father was a great meditation teacher and my grandfather also. When I look at them, wow, nice, you know, they feel calm, peace. <laughs> and I want to become like that. But uh, I don't know, what, what, is, what is meditation? I have no idea. And sometime I, I was running from my house and went to the cave and sit there and pretend meditating. Although I have no idea about meditation, you know. And my grandmother was very worried. She thought, you know, I, I've lost. And then she called village people and they all looking after me. But then later, my, my, my grandmother told me, you know, don't do that next time. But I don't, I didn't listen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and later she said, if you go to that particular cave, okay. I get permission from her. But then when I was nine years old, I really want to learn meditation. And I am shy to ask uh, to my father to teach me meditation. So I approach my mom, you know, ask on behalf of me to my father <laughs> to teach me meditation. And she did, you know. And my father was so happy, taught me meditation. But although I like the idea of meditation, <laughs> but I don't like practice of meditation, you know. <laughs> Anyone who's something like that? <laughs> That's a, not, not my not only, only problem with me, you know. Everybody has similar problem. And then when I was... 13 years old, I was in northern part of India, the place called Sharapling Monastery, where um, the Sid monastery of His Eminence Tassidrumbach. And there's a traditional three year retreat going to start, for three year retreat going to start. I really want to join three year retreat because I think good for me because I'm lazy. <laughs> so if I put myself into retreat, then I can do something, you know. Then I joined in three-year retreat, but the first year of three-year retreat, my panic get worse, stronger, you know, even worse than before. Why? Because I'm not really meditating there, you know. I put myself inside the retreat, then I'm just wandering here and there, you know. It's almost like jail, you know, prison. <laughs> and one day, I asked question to myself, because still I have... Two more years to go. <laughs> so do you really want to spend two more years like this way? Or do you really want to apply meditation technique? What I've been taught. Then in the end, I make a decision that, yes, I really want to apply meditation technique with my panic. And I sat in my room for three days, not joining group practice. Because every day we have two hours, three hours group practice together and, and use my panic as support for my meditation. And after three days later, my panic was gone. And I learned a lot from my panic. And my panic was one of the, my best teacher and best friend. Unfortunately, it's gone, you know. 
<laughs> so now I miss my friend. But although the friend, my best friend, panic was gone, but I have another friend, you know. <laughs> because there's some other problems, of course. Even in the monastery, there's a problem, yeah? Because problems are universal and um, international, so everywhere there's a problem. I have plenty friends, you know. So then I've been using same technique, same meditation, and make it friends with the problems, obstacles, sufferings. And they all become my friends. So I'm very lucky. I have more friends, you know. So what I found is, I found... Um, there's two ways to make your panic or negative emotion, whatever, the, the, the pain or suffering in your mind, continue and bigger, two. One, what I say, yes, sir. You know, yes, sir? Okay. And second, what I say, hey, get out. And do you know, hey, get out? I you know both, yeah? Now I don't have to mention you. Or do you need more explanation? Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, sir, meaning you believe in panic. Whatever panic tell you any message, you say, yes, sir. Problem, yes, sir. Danger, yes, sir. <laughs> Obstacle, yes, sir. <laughs> There's problem, yes sir. There's problem, yes sir. Terrible, yes sir. Miserable, yes sir. <laughs> it's like you've been totally, you're totally believe in panic. And any message from panic, you say, yes sir. <laughs> and panic is exaggerating. Maybe you may have 5%. There's a problem. The problem is maybe 5%. Percent percent. But 95 percent is exaggerate. Your panic exaggerate, you know. And you believe that. <coughs> Should I give you one example? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I will pick one. Nowadays, you know. Should I... This, Maybe nowadays many people they are very concerned about how they look like, yeah. <laughs> Should I give you an example about face or belly? <laughs> huh? Belly? How many vote for belly? Okay, face. Or belly more than face, okay. <laughs> and maybe you have maybe a little bit big belly, who knows, you know. Five percent, maybe big belly. But then you look at your belly again, you know. And look at the mirror, you know. Now, oh, how is my belly? You know? <laughs> and then maybe you need two big mirrors, you know, to, to see the, you know, completed big photo a belly, you know. <laughs> mm, you know. As you look more and more, <coughs> your perception change. And what I call your mind, what I call a monkey mind, this crazy monkey mind, begin to make story, begin to shape reality, construct reality, which is not real, virtual reality. Uh, Fa fabri fabrication? Yeah. Fabricate. A fabrication reality? Fabri fabricate. Fabri fabricate reality. And uh, um, for example, my scientist friends, what they say, in the brain, there's neurons. You know neurons? You know neurons? They love gossip. <laughs> and what I call gossipy neurons. And these neurons connect each other, say, oh, you have big belly, you know. <laughs> then another neuron says, oh, yeah, I agree, you have big belly, you know. 
And then they talk more and more. Big belly, big belly, big belly. <laughs> and they make group. Like political group. <laughs> po political group for small, yeah? Then you make a lot, a lot of things and you say many things. Sometimes make lot, some gossip, you know. And make it bigger, 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 bigger. And as this group becomes bigger and bigger, and for you, seems like your belly becomes bigger and bigger. <laughs> so maybe this week when you look at the mirror, maybe your belly is 30% um, big. But next week when you look at the mirror, your belly becomes bigger. Maybe 40% bigger. Actually, it's the same, you know. But for you, sounds like, you know. It's like you're become much uglier, fatter, <laughs> and belly sounds like become bigger. Even your belly becomes smaller, you know. And then you, you feel very, very, how to say, nervous and, and how to say, feel shame, feel bad about yourself, and you behave like I'm ugly, I'm big belly, you know. And you think, oh, she's looking at my big belly, and <laughs> he's looking at my big belly, you know. Everybody looking at my big belly, you know. And you cannot really communicate with others, you're shy, you know. A lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of feeling of loss of steam and guilt, many different things, you know. And sometimes maybe you may thought, oh, I think everybody not looking at my big belly, you know, this is just my perception. And you try to make research, you know. I think, uh, until now I say, yes sir, yes sir, maybe it's not, it's just my own perception, you know. And you begin to research, and you do research, and sometimes you can get a good res result. But most of the time, the your result of your research say, yes, you have big belly. <laughs> <laughs> then you, your misperception, you know, miss, how to say, mm, this miss, mm, uh, fa fabricate reality become more strong, more reality. It's, it's stronger than real, re real reality. And that's the how we say yes, sir. Okay? And then second is, hey, get out. Hey, get out sometime. Then, for example, when I was young, I had fear of panic. Panic of panic. <laughs> I don't like my panic, you know. Oh, I begin to have panic. I have aversion of panic. And I'm fighting with my panic. As you fight, you have fear, aversion, try to get rid of the panic, those things. And the panic becomes stronger. And the panic becomes your enemy. Almost like. So if you say, yes, sir, panic becomes your boss, bad boss. If you say, hey, get out, panic becomes your enemy. So do you think, any, any, there's any third option? What is it? Friends, your panic. Great. Nice idea. <laughs> Just make friends with your panic. <laughs> Easy to say. <laughs> but difficult to done, yeah? But just having idea about, okay, make friends. It's a lot of benefit. Even though you cannot do it, <laughs> even though you're very lazy, <laughs> but only idea is not enough also. So you have to, you need clue. You need some, how to say, a method, how to make friends. And so method here is meditation. That's why just thinking that I have to make friends with my panic. I have to make friends with my panic. Friends. <laughs> Serious, I need to make friends with my <laughs> And you 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 make another stress, yeah? <laughs> so I just have an idea first is really helps, but then only that not helps. So you need to practice meditation. Okay, this is why I will teach you a little bit meditation later later, but important is how to 
um, the meditation is important. Okay, now next is I have another story about science connected with science. So you want to receive meditation technique first or study like I'm guinea pig, you know. Many scientists, they put me in fMRI, those story. So study first or instruction about meditation first? Meditation. Story. Story first, raise your hand. Story. And instruction about meditation first, raise your hand. Mm. Not many people like meditation, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I don't like meditation, okay? I hate meditation. Right? <laughs> okay, now I will tell you a story. I'm guinea pig, you know guinea pig? What I call red guinea pig. I'm red, you know, wearing red. Normally guinea pig is white, yeah, this big. I've been to <clears throat> few few university, universities. Uh, one is uh, Berkeley. Huh? Berkeley. 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 <laughs> not, not the vegetable one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this, this pronunciation is very difficult for me. And another one is, what they call, ha, ha, Harvard. Also put it difficult. Harvard. 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 Yeah. And particular, special, I went to University of Wisconsin. And they did like, how to say, tests, you know. Many, I've been there many times. And they put me in big machine, what they call fMRI. It's very big. Almost one floor like this, you know. But they changed now. The first time when I... When I was in FM fMRI in the University of Wisconsin, oh, that machine was pretty top, you know. <coughs> but now they update and make nicer. And I've been this year also. I've been there four times. First time is uh, two thousand two, and they put me in big machine and they tied my head, you know. And they give me what they call bike guard or something like that. I have to choose. And they put in cold water, freeze. And then I choose again. Then become very hot, you know, hot. And they screw up with the machine. You know? Because I cannot move my head. Even tiny bit, no good. Then the, the image become fuzzy. Pardon? <laughs> What they call fMRI. F means functional or something like that. Not just, just regular MRI. The difference between these two is almost like camera, photo, and video. The fMRI like, like, like video. <clears throat> and the machine is, looks like shape of white coffin. <laughs> you know? And there's some kind of a big tongue coming out. You know? I have to lie down on the tongue. Ass like crops, because I cannot move my body at all, you know. I have to pretend like I'm crops, crops, crops. How to say? Crops. Oh, yeah. What about that one? And they even give me a white blanket, you know. And inside, the temperature is very cold, you know, cold and noisy and dark. And they put me inside the machine, you know, tongue, go in. Looks like one giant swallowing you. <laughs> <laughs> and inside is very dark, cold, noisy. And then they asked me to meditate. <laughs> three, three meditation point, three, three subject of meditation. First is what they call open present. I will teach you later. Second is, huh? Second is concentration. Maybe I will teach you. <laughs> Third is loving kindness. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> See the time. Okay, three meditation techniques. 
and each one is 90 seconds, you know. Please. And scientists are in the next room. They are having coffee, you know. <laughs> Please, 90 seconds to meditate on compassion. <laughs> and after 90 seconds later, they said, stop compassion. <laughs> and again, 90 seconds of compassion. No compassion. Compassion. No compassion. compassion. <laughs> and then, no, not just that, they send terrible noise, you know, baby crying, and the children screaming, wow, you know. And sometimes they show bloody uh, pictures, like operation, you know, make you frightened, or make you, you know. Then I have to up meditate on open awareness, you know, <laughs> love and compassion. <laughs> and then concentration. And they asked me to focus on something. The first year 2002, I tried to look for, you know, focus, but inside is very dark, not clear. I cannot see anything. I cross my eyes. <laughs> Then finally, I see little dot there. But nowadays, they have little screaming, scream, scream here, scream, scream here. I've been mean, last year, very nice. The, the inside is more bigger. And I don't, we don't need earphone now. No, there's sound there and much light and more open. Pretty nice. Okay. Anyway, the result of this meditation, should I tell you? Result is terrible. <laughs> they say I'm totally crazy. <laughs> that was really disappointing me, you know. <laughs> After all these years of meditating, and they say, No, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> they didn't tell me I'm crazy. But first, they told me uh, there's dramatic change in the brain, not just only me. They test with many other long-term meditators, those who meditate 10,000 of hours. And first time I've been there, the year 2002, and I've been there year 2003 also. And first they thought something wrong with the machine, I don't know, the calculation or something. I have to do, again, same technique, same test. And then year 2000. Four or five, I've been there again. And that time, the subject is about clarity. So first is just general one. And they see what they see in the, in the brand, what they call gamma wave. Gamma. 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 gamma wave. Gamma wave or something like that. <laughs> and there's a different part. And meaning is a different part of brain work together. And gamma synchronize. Gamma frequency, you know, it's a very high. And then <clears throat> um, the next one, what they I did, I mean, the <clears throat> what I did is they give me some kind of monitor in hand, and you have to change your meditation level, like compassion. Okay, now I'm, I want to increase my compassion. Okay, this number, you know, number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, strong compassion. Okay, decrease. Okay, five, four, three, one, zero compassion. <laughs> As I change my compassion, and I have to use my monitor, and... And the result of that is almost same. Like one is what green color and another one is pink color, something like that. It's almost like go together. What happened in your brain and what you describe is same. Uh, down. Look like stock market, you know, when they show me in the in the <laughs> computer. Uh, when, when you look at the stock market, it was like this, yeah. <laughs> Stock market. <laughs> Looks like a mountain. But these two, one is what happened in your brain, one is your description. It's a match. And they say, 
those people who are not meditate, if you do that, totally different. They say, oh, 10, my compassion, number 10. I said, what happened in your brain? Maybe number zero. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and then another test is with the heat, heat, you know. They give me, they put here some kind of box. And in, in the box, there's a water, hot water. And they produce heat, very hot. And put it here, then you have to meditate. And the result of that is, is in the brain, there's some kind of like two area. One is what they call anticipation. Like, you don't like the heat and the worry and um, uh, unbearable feeling, those things, anticipation. And another is clarity, clarity about heat, you know. You just make connection, you just see the heat, the feeling of heat, the heart. And the, for meditators, for example, they send signals, say, after 10 seconds later, the heat is sharp. Heat comes, you know, after 10 seconds later, heat comes. And the non-meditator had bumps, you know, boom. And the blood circulation is. But the meditator still come. And when heat comes, the experience of heat sometimes increase, stronger than nervous. But the worry level continued, not go up, not too much go up, a little bit, big difference. The different, that these two study, what we call the result of meditation, what we call pliability, what we call when you meditate, the result of meditation is Pliability. The pliability means normally you don't have, you cannot control your mind, yeah? You don't want to be angry, but anger comes. You don't want to be um, worried, but then worry comes. And you don't want to be um, hated, but then you cannot control. So by meditation, what we call one of the goal of meditation is to ply, your mind become pliable and walkable. And that's what we call freedom of mind you will achieve freedom of mind. So, for example, you can control your emotion, positive, negative emotion. That's the first, uh, that's first research. And second research is normally, for example, obstacle, pain, we have too much worry. Some scientists say 93% or 95%, a little bit change. 93% of worry is not gonna happen, yeah? It's just, just worry. 93, sometimes 95, so that's a little bit change. But anyway, it's like normally <clears throat> when you have panic, you, you exaggerate. But I say 95% is real problem. Sorry, 5% is real pro pro problem and 95% is exaggeration, yeah? So a lot of exaggerate. But by exaggerating, you cannot see the, how to say it, the reality more clear also. So meditators, there's not so much worry, no anticipation. The anticipation of brain is very calm, but clarity of brain is very clear. You see things more clear. Anyway, there's a lot of many details about that. I'm not going to go over all of this, but I want to summarize. What I found is by discussion with scientists and being as guinea pig, there's three important things. First, what they call Neuroplasticity. You know neuroplasticity? Yeah. And that means your brain has capable of change. 13, 14 years before what they say, neuroscientists doesn't believe that. <laughs> if you are born with unhappy, rest of your life will be unhappy. <laughs> you can kill the, the neurons, otherwise you cannot change, you know. That's the only way, otherwise you're, you're done. <laughs> You're hopeless. <laughs> but now they say, no. This idea is out of out of window. You know out, out of a window? <laughs> Sorry. They said possible to change. Even every day we are changing our brain cells. You know, that's why there's hope. So this is the whole 
point of a mind training, you know, the meditate, you're training your mind. So even you're born with unhappy, no problem. You can change into a happy person. Okay, now second, one of the best way, one of the best way to change your brain function from negative to positive is apply meditation. And now they said, Eckert, Eckert, not effort, Eckert, Eckert, Eckert C, and not side effect, then the meditation is number one. Best. Where to change your brain behave from negative to positive. And number three, that change in your brain through meditation in your body, I mean in your brain, also good for your physical body. It's good for immune system, blood circulation, heart disease, many, many different things. What they do in uh, medicine, they give, they give you, hmm, what's it, what are they called? Uh, huh? Blister. blister. Some kind of like chemical make you blister, small blister here. And then you meditate, then meditation heal the blister. You know, so. And they test with the people who are doing physical exercise, eating nice food, some control group, you know, who do physical exercise and who do meditation. So meditation, people who are doing meditation, doing much better than just physical exercise. Okay. And I add one more. This is from my laboratory. <laughs> Do you want to know? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> this is very important. I don't know. Should I tell you or not? <laughs> okay, okay. I will tell you. Good for your life. <laughs> Why? Because happy mind Healthy body, of course, is good for your life, yeah? Mm -hmm. See? <laughs> <laughs> There's two important points here. One is physical body posture. And for that is keep your two things. Keep your body straight all the way to head. Traditional example of what we call someone Pulling your hair, yeah, pulling? pulling, pulling, pulling your hair. If you're like this, you know, I don't have hair, but uh, <laughs> suppose, imagine if I have hair here, <laughs> I shave every day, you know, but if someone hold up, pull, pull, pull up, then, like this. So it's almost like, it's not like this. So, the middle of your hair, then pull up, then even your neck becomes straight, yeah? Neck also important. Almost like you, the weight of your head rests on your neck like this, not too tightly. So, keeping your body straight is important, but if you have back pain or anything, you can use chair as support for your back. For example, right now, I can use this chair as support for my back, yeah? So any support is okay. In the Tibet, we use many different things. Meditation stick here, you know. Go through your legs. Meditation bell, you know, anything. So as long as if you can keep your spine straight, you can use any support. And the second one is, just relax your muscles. Relax. Relax. But as I told you before, 100% relax. Not 200%. If you try to relax 200%, then maybe become like this, you know. Relax. <laughs> relax. <laughs> Serious, relax. <laughs> or... 
Feliz. Feliz. So not like that. It's just one hundred percent relaxed, not two hundred percent relaxed. So, so you can have tense, tightness, stress allowed. Okay, okay to have tense, tightness, whatever, no problem, just like normal. Okay, that's the physical body posture. I think you know, yeah. Clear? Yes. Only two. Okay, now I will teach you open present. What we call open awareness. The scientists they call open present. Uh, same meaning. But first, I will I will like teach you how to relax your mind. Then after that, I will teach you open awareness meditation. Sounds okay. How many of you learned meditation before? Okay, good. And for this is don't meditate. So if you know how to meditate, let go of your meditation. The coming coming meditation technique, I told you how to relax your mind, yeah? So for this, don't meditate. Even if you know how to meditate, just let go. How to relax? It's very easy. You've been doing that every day. It's not just extra thing here. For example, every day after you finish your job, you feel, whew, Finish my job. <laughs> and you go where? Home? Go to home? You have small, how to say, handbag? Briefcase or just pocket? Huh? Small bag? Put it somewhere else? Go to living room or bedroom, use nice chair and with big deep breathing, you know? You just rest there, yeah? Special Friday night. Friday night, if you rest, it's so nice. Because you finish your you know, week, five days, busy, 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 and Friday, Friday afternoon, after 5 p.m., then you go back to your home and rest. Very nice, yeah? Monday morning, even you try to rest, you cannot rest too long. <laughs> so example is... Friday afternoon. Or you do physical exercise, jogging. After you jog for 10 minutes, or you walk half an hour, after you finish that, maybe you're in the park, in the park. Rest on the bench. <sighs> like that. Just rest, relax. Mind and body both just relax. Any other any other examples? Or if if you're not un, if you're not comfortable, you know, if you have too much worry, you've been you try to rest every day, yeah? <sighs> you know, you've been doing that time to time. So it's not just new. You're doing that all the time. I mean the frequency. So now Try again, okay? Okay, now play. And we're going to use one breathing exercise also. Breathe in. Uh, first, I will do right now. And later, we will do together, okay? Breathe in, deep, breathe in. And let go. As you let go of your breath, your mind just rests. Only one. One deep breathing. Then after that, breathing normally. Breathing normally. Okay? So first try. Try breathe in. Let go. <sighs> okay, good. Now we're going to practice together. Please keep your meditation posture. Keep your spine straight. And uh, just relax your muscles in your body. Okay, now deep breathe in. Let go. And rest your mind as well. Breathing normally now. Just 
Rest. 100% rest your body and mind. Rest as it is. Don't meditate. You are not meditating, this or you can have thoughts. They can come, they can go. Welcome to come, welcome to go. And you're just resting. You are not meditating this way, any sound, any noise, okay. You can rest you can rest in subway. You can rest in the car, something like that. The children's noise, no problem. Of course, your mind cannot rest too long. Very short, few seconds, then maybe you, you forgot to rest. Okay, now finish. How was it? Do you feel a little bit relaxed? If so, raise your hand. Okay. If not, raise your hand. <laughs> Nobody? That's good. Okay, now I have one secret. And some of you know already this secret. Should I tell you my secret? Yes. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Promise? <laughs> If you have promised, then I will tell you. Huh? Serious? No, ah, the guy said no, somewhere here. <laughs> ah, maybe I'm not going to tell you. Huh? Should I tell you? Yes. But it's, it's in my book, you know. <laughs> Okay, this is, this why it's not so serious. Okay, no problem. I will tell you now. The secret is that was meditation. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, huh? Yes. What about, what is it? Resting. Yeah. You just did right now. Just rest, yeah. That is meditation. Why? Non-meditation is the best meditation. <laughs> so you don't have to meditate. Rest there. And that's the meditation. So I told you I don't like meditation, yeah? So I don't meditate. <laughs> and this meditation, you don't have to do anything. Just there. No meditation, but no get lost. There is awareness. 
there's a mindfulness. And this meditation, what we call open, open awareness, objectless meditation, open present. Same meaning. So two things here. No meditation, and no get lost. You are not get lost because you are resting yet. You are resting consciously, intentionally. So you have awareness, mindfulness. Something there. But you cannot really describe what is it. The feeling of just being. That's all. It's not really, you cannot put it into word. Just feeling of being there. So there's no really meditation. So no meditation, no getting lost.